I don't know. But uh, here's what I've learned so far. To get VR even just working in Godot, there's some settings that need to be set and some code that needs to exist. Um, somewhere in your scene, you just need some code. I found it online. I followed it, copied it. I don't really know what it does. I haven't really had to uh, think about it after putting it in my program. But uh, here it is. It makes it work. The first system that I got working is the connection between real life movement and virtual reality movement. I have hitboxes turned on for a lot of this, so you can see the blue outline of my real life hand compared to the mesh that is my in-game hand. A lot of the time these two things will overlap, but there are times you can move your hand in real life where there's a wall in-game and your video game hand will be left behind. The same concept also exists when trying to move the character. You have your real life movement where you can walk around the room, which moves your head, which can subtract, and that should apply some sort of transformation to where the player is in game. But you also have a joystick you can push in different directions that should move your character in game, and you should visually see yourself moving as well. There's a series of calculations that have to happen to get this working as intended. First, I move the body to wherever the head is. So if you've moved around in real life, your head is now in a different position and the character will move to match that. Then there's a whole lot of calculations done for in-engine physics to see if things bounce off each other or things are stopped by something else. And then at the very end of it, I move the character's head back to where the body is. If the body hit a wall and it didn't keep moving, then the head shouldn't continue moving forwards as well. Probably the main area I've been focusing on while working with this project is making the hand movement and interaction feel as intuitive and sensible as possible. Uh, I think it kind of shows with this wonderful, beautiful function that I've written. Um, but really it comes down to just a few things. Your real life hands are being tracked and their actual location is always known. Your virtual reality hands try their best to make their way to the same location, but sometimes are stopped along the way. The whole time that you're moving your real life hands, their speed and the speed of their rotations are constantly being tracked. This speed and rotational speed can apply forces to both thrown objects and objects being pushed. The faster you move it, the more force that gets applied. Working out how you're going to pick up and move objects turned out to be a pretty difficult decision to make. My first thought was to make everything actual physics objects that would be affected by gravity and your hand would just be applying forces to move them. This was pretty complicated and for the scope of what I wanted this project to be, maybe a bit much. Ultimately what I decided was that when you go to pick up an object, all its meshes and hitboxes get added to your hand and your hand now just looks like an object, which is your hand plus the object you picked up. The actual object kind of goes away until you let go of it, in which case it comes back and all the meshes and hitboxes are added back to that object. While this method made picking up objects with one hand really straightforward, it was kind of complicated to now have a two-handed object. The position of this two-handed object was based on the position of the first hand that grabbed it. The rotation, however, was a little complicated. I essentially drew a vector between your first hand and your second hand, and as these two hands moved relative to each other, that would rotate the object. Uh, if you rotated your primary hand it would also rotate the object along the axis between your hands. This was a hugely difficult part that honestly uh, a good portion of this programming experience was just trying to get this working correctly. I went down many different rabbit holes looking at quatorians and all these other things, um, but ultimately I found a method that worked for me that I hadn't really seen anyone else do. The most recent thing that I've worked on here is the ability to swap which hand is your quote-unquote primary hand. If you grab something with your right hand, then grab it with your left hand and let go with your right hand. Originally this caused a lot of problems because your right hand was the object that was moving around and making it be assigned to your left hand is something that I don't quite have working exactly how I want it to work, but it's at least good enough that in most instances feels about right. Now for grabbing small objects, it makes sense that you can kind of pick it up, but if you grab something even bigger, uh, maybe your movements should actually move you rather than moving the object you picked up. Uh, this is where climbable objects come in. As it stands right now, most objects can't be climbed other than just putting your arms above them and pushing down. But there are some objects that I attach a script to called climbable and the game 
treats that as an object that your hands can attach to and then any real life hand movement pushes your body in the opposite direction. The actual code for this climbing is closely related to the code for picking up objects and ultimately the game is just working out if you grab an object is it something you can pick up or is it something that will move you when you move your hand or is it neither of these and you can ignore it. The most recent addition here is the ability to climb objects that aren't just stationary and your movements can apply a movement to the thing you're climbing. Uh, for example, here's me climbing a rope. It's a little bit nauseating in VR and it also spins a little bit too much for my liking. The final feature I've been working on is having the player's body pulled down on the hands. This doesn't have too much of an effect on most of the game, but it means that if you are only hanging on to something with your hands, you can now freely slide down it, like in this cool zipline. There are still some bugs to fix with this uh, and getting some force values tuned correctly, but overall it makes the game a lot more fluid and, in my opinion, a lot more fun. Now working on this project I've run into a ton of issues, some of which I've kind of mentioned earlier. Uh, the longest one was getting two-handed objects working correctly and not having it absolutely freak out when you rotate 180 degrees from where you first grabbed the object. This is something that I even saw in other released VR games when I went into them to see how they fix it. It turned out they hadn't. Um, but it was something that I spent a few months looking into and trying a bunch of different things, ultimately getting it working. Outside of this major difficulty though, there are some very unique problems with making a game in VR. Uh, the first one just being that everything hasn't really been decided on. Like what makes good controls for a first person game on a flat screen, everyone kind of knows, but in VR there's still a lot of things being decided. Some games do things this way, some games do it this way, and trying to find what works best is a little bit of trial and error. I've played a few different VR games at this point and found the ones that I kind of enjoy, and I've tried to emulate those to some degree in this game. One of the most difficult and sometimes the most fun challenge that I run into though is the fact that very few people are doing this right now. Uh, the number of people with VR headsets is, all things considered, relatively small. The number of people making games for those headsets, I would say, is considerably smaller. Uh, and the number of people doing that in Godot is even less. Um, I've decided to program everything in C Sharp just because I'm not a huge fan of Python-like languages. Uh, but this also makes the pool even smaller, and most tutorials at least have to be somewhat translated before I can use them. Um, I feel like it's a common complaint that there's not a whole lot of documentation for Godot, um, and that's probably true to some degree, but when it comes to VR or even 3D stuff, I feel like it is considerably lacking. And there's been a lot of problems I've run into that, you know, my normal solution is Google it and see if someone's done it, um, but very quickly I find, uh, no, not really, or at least no one's posted anything about it. Um, as a result, there's been some very frustrating problems that I've had to fix, but they've also been a lot of fun, um, forcing myself to actually sit down and think about it and read through a lot of documentation until I can find a solution. In the end, I'm not trying to make anything amazing right now, just learn what it's like to make a VR game and see what actually makes VR games fun and worth putting on a headset for. I thought it'd be kind of fun to document the progress, and if I make some more progress, I'll make another one of these videos.